What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to place your model into a background or basically just how to kind of get that uh, right perspective for your uh, for your model and how to render that model and then use it in Photoshop to add some background and to make it look realistic, to make it fit in and to basically the, the, the basically the perspective is the most important part and that's what I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. And if you want to download this project file, check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be using this project I have over here, so I'm just going to open that up. This is an old competition that I did with a friend, so it's it's an interesting project and I thought it would be cool for uh, kind of fitting it into the background. So let's just give it a second to start up and here's the project that we have. So I'm just going to go to the site plan and as you can see here, this is the site plan. It's kind of a small cafe building that that looks kind of like a, like a train. And let's add a camera for our 3D view. So I'm just going to open up this 3D view, go with a camera and kind of place it like this. So we're viewing the model, we can kind of orbit around, so that's what we have now. Uh, a few things that I like to do, uh, first of all, as you can see, we've got these plants over here, and they're actually 3D plants, so every single leaf is in 3D, and that significantly slows down the model when we're orbiting around. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select everything, go here to filter, check none, then check just the planting, hit apply, OK, and then here I'm just going to make that invisible so uh, it doesn't bother us. When we're orbiting the model around, the uh, model is now not that heavy, so it's going to orbit a lot quicker and it's going to render a lot quicker. Another thing, I'm going to uh, select both of these uh, planes on the ground and I'm going to make them invisible as well. So just go here to hide element. Again, the reason for this is we want to have uh, to have it look uh, to basically see the ground from the image that we're going to be using. So basically, uh, fitting uh, your 3D model uh, into the image, the perspective is the most important part. Now, if I move the rabbit out of the way, as you can see here, I downloaded an image. This is kind of a desert, and I want to fit uh, this model that they have over here into this desert that they have over here. So, if I were just to right now render this model and then try to fit it in Photoshop it's probably not going to be the right perspective and I'm going to have a hard time to kind of figure out how it works and I would have to render multiple times and it's going to be really annoying and it's going to take a long time so a work around this problem is if I just maximize Revit here uh, what I can do is I can set up my 3D view to something that I I like so let's say this is what I want to have and now let's just hit render or double R for the render dialog and we get this rendering dialog and now here for the background you can actually insert an image so just go here to image and then load that image in so I'm just going to go here to my desktop uh, this is a Death Valley Desert Look, sounds so cool here I'm just going to constrain it to width that's important and if uh, the image is a bit higher then go with height but I'm just going to go with width for this particular case okay so now I'm just going to hit OK and uh, for the settings I prefer to keep it at the draft resolution at screen and here you're going to see the width and height as you can see it's very small so it's going to render quite quickly now of course it depends on your machine but my computer is decent enough and so it should render quickly so if I hit render let's wait for a second and if you're interested uh, in the computer that I'm using I, I'm going to leave the link to that tutorial where I explain my com computer components uh, so check that out in the description okay so we've got our first rendering and as you can see it isn't really fitting in so we have to make some adjustments so I'm just going to cancel out of this I think it should be uh, viewed uh, a bit from the top and then uh, maybe I should walk back so uh, for uh, orbiting around and for setting up the model I, s I really suggest you use this full navigation wheel so here if you go to walk you can basically zoom in and out from the model so I'm just going to kind of zoom out a bit 
then uh, I can uh, move around, go up and down. So maybe go up just a little bit like that. And then maybe I can look down a bit like this. Okay, so I'm happy with this placement and let's try again with rendering just to see how it fits into the image. So just go here to render and the double R again is the shortcut for that. Okay, so this doesn't work definitely. So what we need to do is we need to uh, bring this down a bit and uh, what you can do you can always move the frame around so let's just move the frame a bit up and then render again so double R render let's see so it's going to take a bit of time uh, again I think the frame should go up a bit more so just go like that let's render again it's uh, a bit of back and forth so now it's almost okay I'm not sure, maybe we should go down a bit. So, or maybe select the model and just go down a tad, let's see. Or maybe that was, I uh, should have gone the opposite way and gone up. Well, actually, yeah, this looks decent enough, I guess. Yeah, maybe I should have gone up a bit, like that. Let's try again. Oops, and now it's all out of whack. So uh, to go back, if you ever mess up like I did over here, you can go to your navigation wheel and then you can go here, as you can see, it says rewind and just go for the last one. So I think it was... Okay, so I went from that to this. Okay, so this was the, the last one. So let's just exit out of that. Let's render again. So double R, render, let's see. Yeah, that's the one I'm happy with. And I'm just going to maybe move it uh, down a bit, the whole frame like this. So the train uh, or the restaurant or a cafe seems a bit further away. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this placement right now. And now it's time to export to Photoshop. Now, before you do that, uh, what I suggest you do, you go here to your uh, temporary hide isolate and you reset temporary hide isolate and for this ground I'm just going to select the ground and this over here and now what I like to do is I like to select all of this and make it a simple generic floor and then go here in edit type go into edit structure and for the material choose some white material like this gypsum wallboard and hit OK the reason for this is uh, if I turn on shadows as you, as you can see, we've got some shadows that are drawn on the ground. And if we don't have anything on, uh, if we if we don't have any floor, it's not going to be dropping that shadow on anything, so that's not going to be working. So what you really need to do is you really need to have some terrain on which you can drop your shadow, and it should be white, so you can select it and uh, delete it later on in Photoshop a lot easier. So once we've got this all set up, let's go and render. And I'm just going to keep it a draft just to keep it uh, the render time slower. But this is the time you should probably set it up at something, something a bit higher. So let's wait for a second. And yeah, I messed up. So <laughs> let's stop that. Uh, here for the image, instead of image, now go for transparent. And yeah, let's render again right now. And the reason for that is if you go with transparent, it's just going to make it a lot easier when you load it back into Photoshop. So let's wait for a second. And there we go. Now let's just export, save to desktop. Let's go save, escape out of this, minimize this. And let's use this image. So right click, open with Adobe Photoshop. And uh, let's wait for a second for it to open. Let's now move Photoshop out of the, out of the way and load this picture in. And let's now maximize it. And as you can see right now, the image is in the correct place. And now we can start playing around and we don't have that ugly background. So that's why, uh, that's the reason why you went with that transparent setting. And if you go over here, as you can see, you can even see through windows, which is something that you wouldn't have if you were just deleting the background. Okay, so once we have this, let's just select this whole surrounding. Make sure you select all of it. So even this, even this, this, everywhere over here. So that's just the price you have to pay to have that, uh, to have that shadow. So unfortunately, it has to be like this. And now uh, just go with uh, 
with the brush or we can just hit delete. Yeah, that's a bit faster. Okay, so let's deselect this. Let's use the brush for this one or the eraser, so like that. I actually like this track over here. It looks kind of cool, kind of like it's something old. Okay, but it's fitting in. Anyway, so now to set up the shadows, uh, what you can do is, uh, because the shadows don't really look like this, so what you need to do is you need to use some of these selection tools. I prefer using this polygonal lasso tool, so if you just uh, along press this, use that, and then you just go all the way around uh, your model. Of course, I'm going to be a bit sloppy for this one, so just go all the way around your model and select everything, the whole shadow, and yeah, let's go like this. So just select the whole shadow, and then uh, you're going to delete it partially. So uh, let's go like that. And of course, you can add to selection this part, but let's let's forget about that for now. So now you go here to your eraser, and you just bring this down the opacity to I don't know, like 10%, and then you start deleting incrementally, uh, just till you're happy with the shadow. So you can do it like that, and okay, let's say you're happy with this shadow, or you can maybe, let's deselect now. You can maybe even select the shadows uh, themselves, and then maybe add uh, a bit of black. So, and just go here with, again, uh, with some low opacity. So go like, I don't know, like that, yeah. So just go with a bit of a darker shadow. Okay, so there we go. That's how you do the, the shadows and that's how you fit your model into the surroundings and make it look perfect. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you want to get this Photoshop file, this JPEG, as well as the Revit file, check out my Patreon first the link in the description. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any possible future tutorials, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.